this is Dr. Janet Bruno, and today I want to talk about foods that fight cancer. Okay, cancer is obviously a very important thing for our health, and it's actually one of the most dreaded diseases in this day and age. And yet there's actually a vast body of scientific knowledge about the causes of cancer and its treatment. However, the majority of people today haven't really tapped into this resource. There's a lot of information out there, and as seems to be the theme of many things I talk about, it can be very confusing. But it's actually a tragedy of sorts that people can't tap into this because the National Cancer Institute indicates that only 20%, 20% of cancers are due to unknown causes. So in other words, 8 out of every 10 cancers are due to factors that are already known to modern medicine. And it, since we know that, it actually allows the opportunity for prevention to be very real. So just think about it. 50% of the cancers are caused by components in our diet. That's extremely well documented. 50% of cancers are diet related, while 30% are caused by tobacco. So really what that means is 80%, the 50 plus the 30, are cancers that are entirely within our control. So. This is powerful, and certainly we know the case against tobacco use, that's well known, and for people that choose to use tobacco, they really know that by doing that, they're actually choosing to significantly increase their risks of cancer. But yet, with regard to food, it's interesting, people don't think of it that way for some reason. There's not that immediate connection when there really should be. So let's take a look at how food can cause cancer, as well as how food can prevent cancer. Now, since the early 70s, research has already proven that high fiber diets not only reduce problems in the digestive system, they also reduce the incidence of colon cancer. Okay, this is old research since the 70s. It's very well documented, been repeated over and over again. So these statistics over and over again show that colon cancer cases are lowest in areas where fiber intake is the highest. In fact, the highest rate of colon cancer are found in Western nations, most predominantly in the U.S., simply because we have a very high rate of animal product consumption, which always goes hand in hand with a low dietary fiber intake. That's, that's always the case. Now, the exact process by which fiber is able to reduce colon cancer is not fully known, but there's a likely explanation and that is that the fact that the high fiber, which is combined with water, not only speeds up the passage of food through the digestive tract, but it also bulks up the fecal matter that results in dilution of carcinogens and the rapid elimination of any type of waste matter from the body. Now that's the, the major working theory. Now another theory has to do with the interaction between what's called bile acids and fiber. Now, bile acids are something produced and excreted by the body, and these can interact with other bacteria, which can actually produce carcinogenic chemicals, so chemicals which are known to cause cancer, specifically chemicals that are known to cause colon cancer. Now, when fiber is present in the system, it actually combines with these bile acids and makes them kind of not workable, and they expel from the digestive system. So it binds onto it, makes it so it can't do any harm, and then expels it. So moreover, fiber can also interact with bacteria present in the colon. So this creates an acidic type of a setting, so it's more acid than base, and that type of setting is actually hostile to the bile acids. And so that also directly reduces their toxicity. So that's a very strong theory as to how bile acids and fiber interact and how fiber can truly reduce your risk of colon cancer. But colon cancer is actually not the only one that's affected by fiber intake. Several studies indicate that a correlation between high fiber intake and a low incidence of stomach and breast cancer has been found. The mechanism that prevents colon cancer may be the same one that influences stomach cancer. It's not fully sure, but that's most likely the case. But in the case of breast cancer, it could be due, and a lot of the research points towards this, that it's due to an interaction between fiber and estrogen. 
you see the estrogen binds with the fiber and then is expelled from the body. And this action results in a lower overall estrogen level, which has been associated in, in innumerable studies to show that a lower estrogen content is actually associated with lower rates of breast cancer. That one is, is very well documented. So as you can see, food has a very real protective effect for cancer, or alternatively, your food choices can actually increase your risk for cancer. So now that you have the solid information, the choice is really yours. You can tap into the power of food to help prevent cancer, or you can actually put yourself in a situation where you're increasing your risk. The choice is yours. <laughs> now this is hopefully informa information you find useful. I find it very important and I can share on this more later, but I wanted to share this in a little nutshell for you. Hope you found it useful. This is Dr. Jana Bruno wishing you a happy and healthy day.